Hi class. Okay, we are going to take a full mouth series of x-rays with the wired sensor. And we're going to use the XEP from RIN. This is the newest generation XEP uh, IR holder. Okay, so you know that we're going to be taking 20 images and the first image we're going to take is the molar, the maxillary right molar region. I hold my, um, my film device with my ninja grasp. You know I'm not wearing gloves right now and that's perfectly okay because his germs are really non-existent. And I get down, I crouch a lot when I place these in and I look for the distal of the second premolar and I place the front end of the IR at the distal of the second premolar. Now something that's really important class is that when I place the bite block in, this is the bite block. When I place that in, I don't just have it kind of floating in midair. I have it pressed up against the occlusal surfaces of that of those teeth. If we have it floating in midair, and we ask the patient to bite down, nine times out of 10, they're going to change the way the IR is actually in the mouth. So you place the film where you want it, and then you ask the patient to slowly bring their teeth together. Okay? And then we take our PID, and we just line it up with the ring. Okay, and ready. And now I'm going to move it. And this time the anterior edge of the IR is at the distal half of the canine. There are times when you're going to have to angle it a little bit like this. Depends on your patient's mouth. Depends on their palate. Dexter has a wonderfully high palate. Don't get used to it, it's not reality. All right, here we go. Ready? Okay, and we go to the mandibular left quadrant. Wiggle your tongue, Dexter. Now, class, I slide in as if this was the head of a snake. I slither in there. I'm trying to be like a ninja, super quiet, super sneaky. They never know that I'm in there. So wiggle your tongue, okay. Sneaking past the teeth, and I line it up parallel with the teeth. Sometimes this is uncomfortable with the patient, so you ask the patient to work with you so that they, um, they help you. Bring it down and close, and then we line up the PID, just like that. And I can see that my ring is king. My ring is the boss and it is telling my PID right where to go. Okay, so now we're going to take the premolar image. So we want to sneak the IR in. Quite often, if you're gonna have to deal with mandibular tori, this is the place. So you might have to go a little bit farther in toward the tongue and work with your patient. You want to keep them as comfortable as possible and let them know that you're gonna be as quick and you're going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Okay, I can see that my ring and my pit are lined up. And now we do a quick change. Flip, flip, flip. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we're ready for the maxillary molars. Distal of the second premolar, bite block on the occlusal surfaces. Usually if you can get the bite block on that second molar, you're in great shape. And close Dexter, and aiming the pin. And here we go. Okay, and then coming forward, distal of the canine, the star of our show are the two premolars. So we bring a little farther forward. Sometimes you're going to be angled like that depending on the patient's mouth. Okay. Dexter sometimes is deceptively easy. I want you to get an idea for what is great 
what a great film looks like, and then we're going to deal with how to get great films on humans who are all different. Okay, mandibular left, going in like a snake, sneaking past the guards. They'll never know the ninja was in there. That's our hope. Distal of the second premolar. And close. Now you can tell, again, I'm not using barriers. I've, infection control is not my point right now. I'm just trying to show you how to use the equipment. And coming forward. Premolars, distal of the canine. The star of our show are the two premolars. And there we go. Quick change with the number two sensor. We're going to use the adhesive tab this time. There are other tabs to use, but I really prefer the adhesives. Everybody gets their uh, taste. People, people come up with their favorite techniques. Okay, Dexter, move your tongue. I'm gonna place the IR. I wanna place the occlusal surface of the mandibular molars here on this tab. And sneaking past the tongue, holding it on the occlusal surface guiding it with my finger here. On the buccal surface, I hold it with my middle finger, and my first finger is guiding the IR, keeping it in place. I look at my outer canthus of the eye, I plus 10, looking down at the barrel of the gun, coming around the corner, as we talked about in our other video on bite wing x-rays. Okay. Moving forward, if the patient doesn't need a break, don't take it out, just slide it forward. And this time with the premolars, you just go pew, pew, right on through, plus 10, going looking right down the barrel of the gun. There's about a thumb's width between the ala of the nose and one o'clock of the pid. And other side. And again, you get down behind the patient. You get down behind the pid and you look right down that as if it was a gun. I don't want to see you around here, around here. And remember the face is curved. The face is not flat. We're not looking at flat Stanley. Premolars. Okay, the premolar image, and I'm looking at it. I can see that the head of the pid and the curvature of the, um, of the teeth are coming straight at me like roller, like uh, railroad tracks. And next quick change, we're going to go to a number one sensor. Okay, so now we're going to do the anteriors with the number one sensor. This little block holds the sensor in place. We'll place it onto the, um, the XAP holder like this. And remember to just carefully guide that cord out of the way. We don't want our patients biting our cord. And then the ring, the ring is on the blue for anterior, yellow for posterior, red for, prim, uh, for the bite wings, but I don't approve of that. All right. Looking for the canine. Canine is the star of the show. 
and right there, ring is king. Okay. This time, the star of our show is the embrasure between the lateral and the central. When you've got a human in the chair, it's really best that you don't go here like that. That's really bad form. That hurts. <laughs> so you're going to be a patient before you get to have patience. So you'll understand how that feels. So please don't do that to your patients. We want them to love coming to the dentist. We want them to love our particular dentist that we're working for. That's how we get our paychecks. And next, right there, between nine and 10. And number 11, just coming around the corner. Sometimes you need to angle over slightly depending on the patient's arch. If they have a wide arch, if they have a narrow arch, you have to gauge it. Okay, Dexter, we're almost done, just four to go. And we're gonna come around here to the canine of the mandibular. Please don't bite on the cord. And here we go. And again, moving toward that embrasure between 23 and 24. This is a short pid, so I don't worry too much about getting my ring nice and close as if I had a much longer pid than I would. I would be more concerned about that. But about halfway down the stem is great. Okay. And there we go, 25 and 26. And the last canine. All right. Okay, class. So I did that quickly, and Dexter does not care if I go like this. Your patient may want a break between um, these anteriors. I did that for, for speed. But um, remember, your patient's comfort is really paramount. Getting great diagnostic images, that's why we're doing this. So we're not just radiating our patients for the fun of it. Um, we're actually hoping to get perfect, clear, crisp images the best we can for our patient. We're trying to give them a benefit. All right, thank you.